morning and uh, we thank him for what he is doing in our life. Thank him for what he did last week. I mean, yesterday, I mean, last week's message was awesome and the Lord is bringing us another one this week and we thank him for it. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Dear God, we bow and we honor. We give you praise and glory. There is no us without you. We cannot exist without your breath. And for this we acknowledge and we say thank you. For giving us the breath of life. For giving us eternal life. That's why the word of God says that if you see a brother that said a sin that is not unto death, say give him life. Because what you have given us we can also share with others. And Father, as we dive into the ocean of your word, we ask that you breathe on us again and help us to walk in the fullness of Christ as we keep walking upon the face of the earth. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Today I'm going to teach the part two, the second part of last week's message that we started sharing, which was titled The Things That Pertain to Life and godliness. Amen. Amen. So this is the part, part two today. And our reference speaking scripture for last week was 2 Peter chapter 1. And I'm going to read that again from verse 2 to 4. 2 Peter chapter 1 verses 2 to 4. The Bible says that grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises that through these things you may be partakers of the divine nature. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. So we were able to really dig deep into this. Last week we talked about what is life and what is godliness. We shared how to get the knowledge of Christ and we talked about the divine nature. Amen. And we move a little bit into how to escape the corruption of this world. But we didn't touch what lust is at all. So I'm going to just press in with the other topic, with the other you know, discussion, point of discussion, which is escaping the corruption of this world, then we will treat the issue of uh, lust. Amen. 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 Galatians chapter 6. Verses 7 and 8 speaks to us in volume. It says, Do not be deceived. <laughs> I like that. Tell your neighbor, do not be deceived. Do not be deceived. Said, <laughs> so, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. That is a fact. There's something we call law of karma, isn't it? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. And it, it, it is scriptural. Mm -hmm. Verse 8 says, For he who sows to his flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. Mm -hmm. But he who sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap what? Everlasting life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you sow to the flesh, there is a reward for you. But that reward is not good. 
of mercy. Yes, I know it's God of mercy, but God has a standard. Don't forget, He can speak you out. If you keep telling something, okay, let's let's look at this from the point uh, of a walking relationship point of view. If you're walking in a place and your boss keep correcting you every day, your first month, second month, third month, and you become unproductive to the company, what do you think the boss is going to do? He's going to fire you. It's simple. He's going to fire you. And we think God cannot fire us because he's a loving God. Yes, he is a loving God. He gives us a long road for us to repent. But most of the time, we take advantage of his mercy and we trample it under our feet. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. Whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. So the active word here is sowing. And that also it is a doing word, which goes beyond mere bad behavior. It is a total lack of morals, values, and even re having no regard for other living things. Giving yourself every pleasure, gratifying your flesh, gratifying your needs, and feeding it will surely lead to corruption. But when you deny the flesh, <laughs> like Paul said, I die daily. When you deny the gratification of the flesh by regularly refusing its dictates and disengaging from its pleasure to do the will of God, you will be sowing into your spirit. Let me give you a vivid example. We know as believers we should be praying. Isn't that correct? We know we should be fasting. We know we should be studying the word, reading the word. Now, instead of you making up time to pray out of your busy schedule, instead of making up time to fast, instead of making up time to study and read the word of God, the little time you have, you prefer to go spend it with a friend. And when you get to that friend, what do you do? You talk about all the troubles you've been going through in the past. Only God knows how long you've seen each other. And that's all you speak. You can talk, 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 talk for the next three solid hours. You have made no room for the person of the Holy Spirit. And you keep doing that on a regular basis. Scientifically, it is said that whatever you practice for eight minutes every day, regularly, you become it over time. You can imagine you work for a whole year and every week you only have spare time of probably, let's say you have 10 hours spare time for a whole week and you spend those 10 hours every week on things that pertains not to godliness and life. Do you think you will have more godliness in you? No. So, that's why when you engage with the things of the kingdom, it grants you access to the divine nature of God. That's why King David said, For you will not leave my soul in hell, nor will you allow your Holy One to see corruption. You will show me the path of life. You will see that in the book of Psalms, chapter 16, verses 10 and 11, you will write again. You will not leave my soul in Sheol. You will show me the path of life. Don't forget, God cannot be mocked. So in order to escape the corruption of this world, I need to stop sowing into my flesh. Spending quality time in the presence of God. You are in the car, you are in the presence of God, right? You are at home, you are in the, in, in the presence of God. You are in the bedroom, you are in the presence of God. You are at work, you are in the presence of God. Because everything you do, you do it with 
that consciousness. There is no way you will surround yourself with his consciousness daily, week in, week out, month in, month out, year in, year out, that a deposit of God will not drop into you. A life that pursues holiness will surely be free from corruption. That is how to escape the corruption of this world. By pursuing what? Holiness. By, by pursuing holiness. A life that pursues holiness will surely be free from corruption. What you pursue will determine the things you do to achieve them. Isn't that correct? And what you do in the process are seeds that you are sowing toward whatever it is that you desire to become. If a young man desires to become an engineer or to become an educator, that desire will be propelling him, you know, towards achieving that purpose. And everything he will be doing will be taking steps towards achieving that. Praise the Lord. Amen. When we talk about pursuing holiness, according to you know my new book, I've got my new book here. It is titled "The Spirit and the Person of Jesus Christ." In uh, I talk about the spirit of holiness in here. I'm going to read you know from page one and uh, page eleven, you know, and I'm going to read from page fourteen. Such a very powerful book, you know. Some of the people that have read it sent me questions about some of the things I said in there. Amen. And by the grace of God, I've been able to answer accordingly. Amen. 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 In, on page 11 here, I wrote and said, It is noteworthy to understand that Jesus wasn't declared as the Son of God by miracles. Hello, church. You see, what most people, most believers are looking for, or even unbelievers, is just for God to just step into their situation and just turn everything around and miraculously, miraculously just do things. No, Jesus was not proclaimed as the Son of God by miracles, but by the Spirit of holiness. You will see that in Romans chapter 1, verse 3 to 6. Romans chapter 1. 3 to 6. You know, I wrote here. It said, concerning, I, I'm reading it. I'm going to read verses 3 and 4. Romans 1. You can write it down. I caught it here in, in, the, in the book also. But I just want to read verses 3 and 4. It says, concerning his son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who was born of the seed of David, according to the flesh, and declared to be the son of God with the power according to the spirit of holiness, by the resurrection from the dead. Now, for you to escape corruption, you have to pursue what? Holiness. You have to do what? Pursue holiness. Let's go to the page 14 of that book. Here's, I said, if holiness is described as abstinence from sexual immorality, or they do not steal, do not commit murder, and the rest of the Ten Commandments. Section we now say God's holiness is tied to such earthly things. Don't we know that, that God is holy? Amen. And I said, is the spirit of holiness subjected to such earthly struggles? And the answer is no. Because holiness has a higher law of operation, it is above other conduct. Alright? And one of the things I said here that, you know, brought up question, I believe, is in the, it's in that same page. I said, according to Hebrews 12, verses 14 and 15, I said, holiness is a spiritual state where the sin nature does not exist at your thought level. Holiness is a spiritual state where the sin nature does not exist at your thought level. Wow. And the first question I received 
after my one of my associate pastors read this, was like, how possible is this? That we will exist without having any corrupt thing existing in our thoughts, in our mind. And while he was talking with me, he answered his own question. He said, with God, all things are possible. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. But I think you understand that it is possible. If you have not walked in need, then you will be thinking it is, it is difficult, but it is possible. If I really want to enjoy what the scripture says that God has made available to me, everything that pertains to life and godliness, I need to understand these things. In that at your thought level, you don't even think evil. You don't think anything that causes corruption. You see other people's stuff, you don't even think about stealing it. Are you with me? A man walking on the streets see beautiful women, you don't even think anything negative. All you can see is another human being just walking, doing their business. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You, you can enter into that realm. It is possible. It is very possible. It depends on what you are pursuing. You see, most believers today will ask the question, if you share with them that, oh, you can live a holy life and you can live a righteous life, and the first thing they want to ask is, don't you tell a lie? And I smile when such questions come up. And I'll be like, okay, are you looking for a justification for your action? Or you are looking for God's justification for righteousness? So, as far as they're concerned, if the other brother or the other sister says, oh, okay, I do tell a lie too sometimes, or I do fall into this sin or fall into that, they say, you see, it is not possible. Meanwhile, it is very possible. The person you need to ask such question is God. Not the other brother, not the other sister. Ask God, is it possible? And the answer will come to you from the scripture. With God, all things are possible. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15 says, Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Pursue what? Peace. Hebrews 12, 14 and 15. Pursue peace with all people and holiness without which no one will see the Lord. Looking carefully, lest any for anyone fall short of the grace of God, lest any root of bitterness springing up cause trouble. Oh my God! And by this, many become became. I'm sorry, many become defiled. That is, they become corrupt. Now let's look at that. The Bible says, "Looking carefully, not to fall short." Meaning. Looking carefully means you, you are so into these scriptures, you are so into the Bible to the extent that you, you gaze into it with intent. That Lord, how do I make this possible? And in your closet, when you are praying, the Holy Spirit will minister to you. Hallelujah. It means when permitted, when you permit the root of bitterness, when you permit the root of bitterness to spring up and you practice it, <laughs> it will make you fall short of the glory of God. It will. And it will not just make you fall short, because the moment you fall short, you become defiled. Falling from grace defiles you. May we not fall from grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Falling from grace, you are falling from something to something because you are falling into corruption. Now let's look at it. In reality, we know we have experienced this probably in the past, you know, that when people do something really, really wrong to us, we feel bitter. Isn't that correct? We feel bad about the whole situation. 
But the Bible says, don't let the spring, don't let the, 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 the don't, no, don't let the root of bitterness spring up. That is, don't let that seed germinate. Are you with me? Don't let it come up, come out. Let it die in there. Even though you're feeling bad, don't let bitterness take over your spirit. Because the moment you allow it to evil spring out a little bit. Oh my God. The Bible says that it will cause trouble. <laughs> this is not fornication and adultery. We are talking about things that nobody might know even about you. Because when you are married with someone, mm, every fiber of your being wants to like, oh no, this is not right. Uh -uh. Sometimes it gets into revenge and gets to retaliation and all those stuff. But the, God is telling us, don't let that seed, don't let it even raise up its ugly head in your spirit. Mm -hmm. Because if it does, it's going to cause trouble. What kind of trouble? Spiritual trouble. And even physically, you will be doing things that you never believe you can do. If we continually defile the body in this manner, corruption will surely make our flesh a hope. May that not happen to us in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So when the Bible says, looking carefully, not to fall short, these are the things he's saying we should pay attention to. Look carefully to yourself. Is bitterness, is root of bitterness springing up in my heart? If you can deal with it and kill it, because that's what it means to die daily. You kill it. Right there and there, you kill it. Don't let it grow at all. Hallelujah. I believe it exists in the mind. Verse 16 of that scripture of Hebrews chapter 12 says, Let there be any fornicator or profane person like Esau, who for one muscle of food sold his bad life. Okay. I wrote here in my notes. Illicit sex, or what people call a flea, is an act of fornication. Hello, church. It is not expected to be practiced by a believer. A Christ follower does not practice a flea. Not at all. You don't go happy before you marry. You marry before you start living together. That is the law of God. Little wonder, you see, the life, the, the, the life and the godliness of God is not resident in us. Because the more we practice these things and we think they are okay, we are actually living a debased life at the level of corruption. Profanity means to treat something sacred with abuse. Say, no, profane person like Esau. You know? To treat a sacred, a holy thing with abuse, irreverence, or contempt. The Bible says that let not the bed be defiled. Let not the bed be defiled. And you're already cohabiting, and you come to church on the money, and you raise up holy hands. Really? To whom? Don't forget, the Bible says, don't be deceived. God cannot be mocked. If you practice such things, you need to go before the Lord, confess your sins, and repent of them. And one thing I know about God is, if you're genuine with your repentance, He will forgive you and give you another chance. And make things right. You want to escape the corruption of this world? These are the stuff you need to pay attention to. Meaning, when we consciously or unconsciously trade our spiritual life for the things that satisfy our body as common as food, it is an indication of we not pursuing holiness. As far as Esau was concerned, it's easy 
it, is it just a food? Like somebody is saying, it's, it's just a feeling. It's just a feeling. And that is it. You just do it and go. Just, just move on, really. You have just treated a sacred thing in an unholy manner and you said, just move on? No, not at all. Verse 17 says, of that same scripture, Hebrews 12, so for you know that afterward, when he wanted, speaking about Esau, to inherit the blessing, he was rejected. Oh my God. He was rejected, for he found no place for repentance, though he sought it diligently with what? With tears. You want to escape the corruption of this world? Do not trade your spiritual life for physical things. Do not. Do not compromise your spiritual life with whatever it is that you think you want to achieve on this planet Earth. Do not trade. The only thing you should be trading is your sorrow, is your pain. Amen. Like that song says, I I'm trading my sorrows. I'm trading my shame. I'm laying it down for the joy of the Lord. Then you come after that and say, yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. You say yes to the will of God. So we should not be deceived. God cannot be mocked for whatever we sow. That we will also be. Remember, you become whatever you pursue and practice. Therefore, pursue holiness and the life of God, and you will become it. You will receive it. And you'll be able to live like Christ upon the face of the earth. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now let's talk about lost. L U S T. Hallelujah. <laughs> to lust after something requires first an interest. Also go to a 
place where her husband doesn't want her to go without her husband's consent. Are you with me? Knowing that, oh, this is going to cause this person a pain. Are you getting me? But she's going to go anyway. Because something is driving her towards doing that. Praise the Lord. I deliberately use the word husband and wife because they are supposed to be one. Isn't that correct? Husband and wife are supposed to be one. And having the unity of faith and purpose. But laws can make them break those things. Lost. Either it is love or lost. That passion can drive you to do something positive or negative. There are a lot of things in our environment that are good for food. Don't you think so? And pleasant to the eye. But they are not for Christians. Amen. Amen. Now for us as believers of Christ. God is saying, don't eat them. Don't taste them. You know we are driving up. You know, remember the conversation between Eve and the devil. The serpent. And God no healing. There are three incidences that came, suddenly came to light in that discussion. The tree suddenly become or became pleasant to the earth. After the discussion, the tree suddenly became pleasant. The fruit suddenly became good for food, really. She suddenly agreed with them that she can be like God because the tree suddenly became desirable. Watch your desire. Watch that thing that is driving you. Watch it. The Bible said that and the tree suddenly became and the tree became desirable to make her wise. Because the devil has told her before that if you eat out of it, you will become like God. So all of a sudden that mind became, mm -mm, that desire became so strong. And the game of the enemy is the game of loss of the flesh, loss of the eye, and the pride of life. The same game is played today. It has never changed. Genesis 3, you can read verses 1 to 6, but I'm going to read just two verses. Verses 5 and 6. Therefore, God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open. That was what the devil told Eve. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. Wow, really? So the question is, who were they like before? Alright? Verse 4 says, and all drank the same spiritual drink. 
For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Hey, hey, hey. We all go to church today. In fact, some churches will have more people than the other. But we all attend church and we read the word of God and we do worship God. That is a type of all of us being baptized into the same spirit, with the same baptism. Amen. Amen. And we drink the same spiritual drink. You know, which is which is uh, when the Bible says that you should be drunk with the Holy Ghost, not to be drunk with wine, alright? So we need to all receive the Holy Ghost, we're all baptized, we can speak in tongues, you know, and, and pray for people and they will, be, they will be healed and stuff like that. So we all have that same experience. But listen to what verse 5 says. So, but with most of them, God was not pleased. God was not pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. What did they do that made their body to be scattered in the wilderness? Let's continue reading. Verse 6 says, Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not be lost. Do you see that? After evil things as they also lost them. In fact, their case was so serious. They lost for special food. They got tired of a specific food, the manna that God was giving them. And they said they needed maybe just fried chicken. Or maybe they and, and one thing I love God is, I mean about is that I love about God is that God can give you anything. But some will come out of his very good will and some out of his permissive will. What we should be longing for is to get the exact will of God. Not his permissive will. You, you have read the story, you find out that they requested for different things and God went down, you know, fried chicken for them with a heap of about four feet. And then, I mean, very long. And the Bible says that while the food was yet in their mouth, God struck them dead. So be careful what you are lost in. I mean, check out your desire. It might be a lost. Verse 7 now says, And do not become idolaters as for some of them. That means some of them that drank the same spiritual drink, that were baptized in the same spiritual, under the same cloud, and that they ate, they ate the same food, spiritual food, become what? Idolaters. They were worshiping idols. That was when they turned their gold to, you know, to an image. And it says, as written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. This, as I read this, this particular portion of the scripture, you know what I saw? I saw food and parties. Amen. Amen. Food and parties. The people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to do what? To play. Trading their spiritual life for food, just like Esau. He saw playing around with his back right and said, Is it not food? Just let me eat. So, eating and partying are the detriment of their spiritual soul, their souls, of their spiritual, you know, upbringing. Verse 8 says, Do not let us commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. So sexual immorality is one of the things God hates most and he kills people for it. Verse 9 says, don't let us, do not let us tempt Christ as some of them also tempted and were destroyed by serpents. Stop complaining. That's what verse 10 says. He said, do not complain as some of them also complain and were destroyed by the destroyer. I have talked about this issue of complaining. You know, in our churches over the years, one of the things I don't like people doing around me is to complain. My wife knows. I don't like it. If you don't do it, just calm down. Think it through. Stop complaining. You want to do this, you complain. You are supposed to do that, you're complaining. What is it?
things that you want to do in life that you won't complain. The Bible says we should be thankful, not complainers. Hallelujah. I may not love what I'm going through right now, but Father, I thank you for it. My situation might not be exactly what I desired it to be, but Father, I thank you for it. Oh, the nature of my job is not what is not giving me breathing space. It's, 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 it's very worrisome. But Lord, I thank you for it. Oh, this child is not doing well, Lord, and you gave it to me. For now, not doing well, but I thank you because it's not doing well. Be more thankful than being a complainer. Because this group of people were complainers. Apart from the fact that they were sexually immoral, they are idolaters, they, you know, they, they take Christ and the serpents destroy them and they, they were complainers and they were destroyed by the destroyer. I don't want to be destroyed. Do you? No. So stop complaining. Start being thankful. Hallelujah. Verse 11 hit the nail on the head. It says, now all these things happen to them as what? As examples. And they were written for our admonition upon whom the ends of the ages have come. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The end of the age is here. It's not coming. It's here. We are experiencing, we are watching on our TVs the fulfillment of prophecy. So it's the, the end of age is not coming, it's here. And these are the things we need to pay attention to. Revelation 22. Verses 14 to 17, I'm going to read. But before I read, I need you to understand that once we can individually deal with corruption and lusts in our lives, then we can have the rights and the access to the tree of life. Amen. Amen. Which is exactly at the center of the garden of the Lord, which Jesus came to give us abundantly. Don't forget the Bible says that the, the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I have come to do what? To give you life and life abundantly. Hallelujah. So, the more we feed from this tree of life, the more death is eradicated. The more our lives become more like God, thinking like Him and carrying out our assignment on us just as Christ. Revelation 22, I read verses 14 to 17. Blessed are those who do His commandment. <laughs> Amen. That they may have the right. I love that statement. When I do the commandments of God, I possess the right, the authority to the tree of life. And I will have access to enter through the gates into the city. Do you know that spiritually speaking, according to the scripture, after God sent out Adam and Eve, he put an angel in front, in front of the garden. And the angel has a friendly soul. Any other person that wants to enter, we partake of that sword, the cutting of the flesh. Amen. Which is an aspect of you being born again and walking in his will. You know, experiencing, you know, difficulties. There are a lot of things that are good. They look good for us, but we cannot taste them. We cannot eat them. We cannot partake of it. There's what about all the pleasures of sin. Sin has a pleasure. That people enjoy. That's why sinners, we rather prefer to stay as sinners because they are enjoying it. But they don't know what they are enjoying is going to destroy them. That is the destroyer. So following the commandment of God is a restriction on my part that will help me to stay on course so that I can gain access to enter. And once I enter, believe you me, I eat all the fruits of life. And that's why I can sit there in the corner of my house and think like God. God will not take, wake up in the morning, take a gun, 
and God will want to shoot somebody there because you don't like that face. Amen. God will not, God will not, there are so many things we, we need to understand that God will not do, but we do and we still call ourselves Christian. You cannot right a wrong by doing wrong. You can only right, rewrite a wrong by doing what? Right. The Bible says that we nullify disobedience by our obedience. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 15 says, But outside are dogs and sorcerers and sexually immoral and murderers and idolaters and whoever loves and practices a lie. I don't care if you're a pastor of a church or you're a deacon or whatever position you think you, you, you carry, if you practice a lie, you're outside. You have no access to the tree of life. Verse 16, Jesus now spoke to John and said, I, Jesus, have sent my angel to testify to you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David, the bride and morning star, and the spirit and Christ say, Come, and let him who hears say, Come, and let him who thirst come. Whoever desires, do you see that again? What are what you desire, what your passion is about? Let him take the water of life free. You don't pay anything. So check out what your desire is driven towards. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In conclusion, we go back to our main text. 7 Peter chapter 1, verse. We read from verses 5 to 9. Or verses 5 to 10. Second Peter chapter 1. Amen. But also for this reason, this is the submission of God to us. Amen. First Peter, or second Peter, pardon me, not first Peter. Second Peter chapter 1 from verse 5. Amen. It says, But also for this reason, give it all diligence. Tell them, give it all diligence. Say it louder than a minute. Give it all diligence. Amen. Amen. Add to your faith virtue. To virtue, knowledge. To knowledge, self control. To self control, perseverance. To perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness. And to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours, and abound, you will be neither married nor unfruitful in the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Verse 9 now says, For he who lacks these things, if you lack faith, you lack virtue, you lack knowledge, you lack self control, you lack perseverance, you lack, lack godliness, you lack brotherly kindness, you lack love. Said so those who lack these things is short sighted. Even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sin. My prayer is this may we not be short sighted. In the name of the Lord Jesus, may we have clarity of purpose and ambition toward building the kingdom of God in our lives. Amen. And finally, in verse 10 and 11, the Bible says, Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent. Oh, I love that. To make your call and election, how? Sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Because you're a good God. We thank you for your word, Mrs. Yea and Amen. We pray, O oh God, as your word has done forth into our spirits, we pray that you help us in our, on a daily basis as we keep working with you to practice godliness, to shy away from getting involved in lust and corruption in the name of Jesus Christ. 
Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Before I go today, I want to just reiterate about this book, The Spirit of uh, Christ, The Spirit and the Person of Jesus Christ. It's an Amazon. We have the Kindle, you know, uh, that is readable on your phone. You know, if you just look it up on, on Amazon, you can get it. And you can get a hard copy like this also. So I encourage you to please get it and read it. And you can send me any question about it. And I'm trusting God that He will give us all understanding in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 God bless you all.